Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of What's Next in Compliance with me, Matt Kelly. Today, we're going to talk about the future of the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. Enforcement of the FCPA is probably one of the largest worries that corporate compliance officers have. And given the results of the election last November, compliance officers are allowed to feel some anxiety and uncertainty about how changes in FCPA enforcement might happen. First, we have to remember that there are two different ways the FCPA could theoretically be changed. It could be changed at the legislative level. I'd like to knock that down first. We are not going to see Congress repeal the FCPA. We are not going to see them change the language of the FCPA. That is a time-consuming and politically awkward process to weaken anti-corruption laws. There's no real need for it. They have plenty to do. So that really is not the ball that compliance officers need to keep their eye on. What is more important to look at is changes in the executive branch. How are the Justice Department and the Securities and Exchange Commission going to enforce the FCPA from here forward? They will have a lot of discretion in how they may or may not enforce these crimes. So we need to keep a couple of ideas in mind. Broadly speaking, what will we see? I believe that we're going to see a whole lot more carrot to encourage cooperation and a whole lot less stick to beat companies over the head with large fines and onerous consent decrees and compliance monitors. It really, it is going to be all about how can companies demonstrate cooperation, participate and cooperate with enforcement agencies, and therefore win more credit from these agencies for having a good effort. Having a good effort is code for having an effective FCPA compliance program. Really what we need to keep in mind is that this change is only going to make the importance of having a well-run, well-oiled compliance machine go up. So this gets us to the big key question here. What does cooperation with the Justice Department actually mean? We can first look back to the FCPA pilot program that started one year ago in early 2016. The goal there was to encourage companies to cooperate. If they did, they would win breaks on potential fines and penalties. A deferred prosecution agreements might get downscaled to non-prosecution agreements and the like. I believe we're going to see more of the spirit of that pilot program continue and it all hinges on having good cooperation. Look to the pilot program for what cooperation means. It means when you have an issue, you self-disclose it. It means that when the Justice Department comes and says, we want you to investigate this, you have an investigative ability to be able to find the facts. You can turn over all the facts that you have, all the facts that they ask for. This gets to a secondary concern that we'll have, which is the future of the Yates Memo. Now, the Yates Memo came about in 2015, where the Justice Department said that to win any cooperation credit at all, you had to turn over all evidence that might implicate the perpetrators of an FCPA crime in your organization. I don't think that's going to go away. That's going to be prosecutorial discretion. They want to keep that. They want to be able to lean on companies to say, we want to find the actual perpetrators. You're going to have to work hard to help us get there. Now, again, this works in a compliance officer's favor. If there's a perpetrator who is violating the law in your organization, you want to know, you want to find out who that person is, you want to get rid of that person. So there isn't actually anything wrong with the spirit of the Yates Memo there. Now, if you can fulfill the spirit of the Yates Memo, and as a bonus, it shows that you have an effective compliance program and you are cooperating with the Justice Department, and then you get less fines, you get maybe no fines, you get a declination to prosecute, everybody wins, including the compliance officer who goes to the board and the CEO to say that we have resolved this issue. You know, the more you talk about it, the more you see that really the penalties may go down in favor of rewards. But again, you're going to need an effective compliance program either to avoid penalty or get rewards. It doesn't matter to you, the compliance officer. The bottom line, the foundation, is that effective compliance program. That's here to stay. And lastly, we should note that for all of our talk about the FCPA, we have not mentioned the rest of the world, which is a big thing. And it has stepped up its enforcement of anti-bribery laws quite a bit. Even if we were to do something drastic, such as let FCPA enforcement lapse entirely, which I do not expect at all. Even if that happened, the rest of the world still has 
the Bribery Act in the UK, the Clean Companies Act in Brazil. We have anti-corruption laws now being enforced more vigorously in countries from Canada to the Netherlands to other places in the European Union. Uh, that spirit of anti-corruption is only going to get bigger and better around the world. And as we've said before, when you look into the future, paint a picture where people are pro-corruption. That's not going to happen. The demand for better corporate compliance is going to be solid and steady. It is definitely going to be very relevant to the FCPA enforcement, uh, and we are going to continue to see a strong need for this for quite a while, no matter who is in charge in Washington. So that's all for this episode of What's Next in Compliance. Thank you for listening. Uh, I'm Matt Kelly, and I hope you'll join us again next time.